It's day 29. We're approaching a month. A month of consistent daily uploads for a quick news fix, that is. Don't want to spend increasing hours of your life scrolling endlessly through your news feed? Then Too Long Didn't Scroll is for you. Find out what was news on any day starting from January 20th, 2023 on any platform from YouTube to podcast apps like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more. Find links in the description. Anyway, let's get on to what happened on February 17th of 2023. We start on day 29's events in the country of the Philippines, specifically focusing on the region of Moro. The region has been struggling amidst an insurgency protesting Philippine rule over the region, born out of demonstrations against incumbent governments by the Banks of Moro ethnic group ever since American colonization back in the late 19th century. The conflict in its current form has lasted since 1968, primarily between the Philippine government and the Moro National Liberation Front, aligned with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, until the latter two signed a peace treaty with the former. The smaller armed groups, including those aligned with ISIS, continue to fight to this day. As of today, a group of yet unknown government, suspected to be working with the Islamic State-aligned groups, attacked a military and government convoy in the Moro region, killing four people and injuring two others, including the regional governor of Lanao del Sur. The governor is currently in stable condition, and national police are currently attempting to find details on the perpetrators and their motive. The Moro conflict has presently claimed over 120,000 lives, including civilians. We now head on over to the countries of Russia and Ukraine, where the Russo-Ukrainian war rages. Over the past few weeks, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has been warning allies and the rest of the world over concerns of a renewed Russian offensive about to plunge right into the Ukrainian heartland, particularly urging your European allies to provide more aid and equipment for its military. One particular region where this renewed offensive appears to be brewing is the region of Bakhmut, where shelling is nothing but pervasive and a concerningly high volume of soldiers of Russian and Wagner Group forces are descending. Ukrainian forces have recently blown up a bridge leading into the region, a move seen as a sign of preparing to retreat, though Ukrainian officials have denied this. As of today, another major shelling attack by Russian forces in the region has occurred in the form of artillery strikes and BM-21 Grand rockets. Five people were killed and nine injured, and numerous buildings were destroyed. Russian aligned forces have also likely seized the village of Paraskovivka, north of Bakhmut, as they attempt to squeeze Ukrainian forces out of the region. Though official reports have yet to confirm this. The capture of Bakhmut would mean a key victory for Russian forces and the general populace as the one-year anniversary of the invasion approaches. We now concern ourselves with the countries of South Africa, China, and Russia, comprising three of the largest navies in the world behind the American Navy. The three countries have just completed a naval exercise in the ocean that has lasted 10 days, during which a variety of heavily armed and armored warships arrived on the South African coast in an exercise they dubbed Mosi 2 after the Sawana word for smoke. American officials have condemned South Africa's participation in the exercise, accusing of colluding with China and Russia, and more outspoken opponents have accused the country of endorsing their participation in the Russo-Ukrainian war. South Africa has reviewed these claims by stating it professed neutrality in all such conflicts and that it regularly hosts naval exercises with countries of all types, and that the primary priorities of the Navy mostly involve cleaning up piracy in African waters. Though experts have noted that China appears to be attempting to secure shipping lanes and establish a greater naval presence in Africa in general. Meanwhile, in the country of Bulgaria, we bring ourselves to the outskirts of the capital city of Sofia, where a discovery was made in the form of an abandoned truck carrying the bodies of 18 people, immigrants from the unstable region of Afghanistan. An additional 35 people were found unhospitalized, who were described as freezing, wet, and hungry. Many immigrants from the Middle East often try to make their journeys by getting rides from smugglers, many of whom force the immigrants into crowded and unsafe conditions as they make their way across entire continents. Because of concerns that include such incidents, as well as additional security and rule of law issues, Bulgaria is not allowed to participate in the European Union's passport-free Schengen zone, though it has stated it will try to reapply. In other news, the Pakistani Taliban have conducted an attack on a police station in the capital of Karachi, killing three police officers and one civilian, while the Taliban lost three of its own militants. Additionally, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JXA, has just abandoned the rocket launch today when two boosters failed to ignite. This was his first failed launch since 2003.